Shalom everyone, Rabbi Eric Solomon, Raleigh, North Carolina. A little more morning Torah, especially in Elul this month or a few weeks before Rosh Hashanah. So this is the time where we are doing a cheshbon nefesh, an internal looking at our lives and our relationships according to our tradition and thinking how can we improve better within ourselves, our love for ourselves, but also how, what can we do better in terms of relationships with others. And this is a time for reconciliation. If there are people in our lives, and we all have them, where we need to do some repair. This is the time to approach, to see if it's possible to approach. And it could be an email or a phone call or a text. It could be face-to-face, -face, probably the most ideal, where you say, I'm sorry, and, or you perhaps engage in conversation with someone else who approaches you to apologize. So I want to offer these words in honor of uh, this, this September 11th. Rabbi Jen, we lived in New York City on 9-11, and we will never forget that horrific, horrific day and all those souls who terribly perished horrifically, unjustly, randomly, um, but uh, holy souls that were lost that day to our country and to the world. So I want to bring that up here. What happens if one is, needs to repent or apologize to someone who's no longer alive? And very powerfully, Maimonides, great rabbi of the Middle Ages from Egypt and Spain, speaks exactly about this in the Mishneh Torah. He says, you know, look, the ideal way to apologize, he describes it very well. He's supposed to go to the person, confess, apologize out loud, specifically saying, what is the sin? You can't just say, I, maybe I made a mistake. No, here's what I did wrong. And then you express your remorse, how badly you feel about this. You say and commit, I will never do it again. And the ultimate test, he says, is if the situation arises again, something of the dynamic, and you don't do that sin or mistake or words, Again, you then have proven that you have done tshuva. You've repented because the same chance again is what his test is. The challenge is what if someone has died? So two answers I'm going to give to this. Maimonides says, very powerful. I've been able to be a part, the privilege to be a part of it only a few times, but I know others have done something similar. He says, bring a group of people down to the grave. Go to the cemetery if you're able. He says, put up a minion of people but I've heard other interpretations that bring at least, it's called a bait dean, which is three witnesses. So it's you and three others. And do that process of confession before the grave. Now, the Rambam was a scientist. This, I don't think he thinks that necessarily the deceased hears you or knows, you know. But by you going down there and having it testimony essentially before witnesses, and those witnesses could be your you know, friends, people you know, family perhaps, your congregation that you cherish, and stating it and admitting it and showing remorse is a tremendous statement of your character. And can it spiritually travel? Who knows? Certainly can't hurt, but I've seen the person who feels in their heart regret, it has lifted them and cleansed their soul in preparation for Yom Kippur. The second piece is what if that person has hurt you? and they're no longer here. And that's, I think, even more common. There are no easy answers for this. Uh, that process is even more complicated. What I would say, though, in the middle of Yom Kippur services, one of the holiest moments, most emotional moments, is the Yisker service, score, where we really honor all the deceased. Just one example, we had a Holocaust survivor in our congregation who did not know when his parents and siblings were killed by the Nazis. He decided Yom Kippur was their yard site, the anniversary of their death. So he would pray, not only Yisker to remember, generally speaking, those you've lost, but that day is the anniversary. It's an incredibly powerful day. So Yom Kippur Yisker is considered like the peak of holding the souls of those no longer with us. But what happens if you have a complicated relationship? You're still hurt by things they said. I've heard a, a great rabbi, a number of rabbis have said, you know, death in the Jewish take is death is the end of a life. That is true but it is not the end of a relationship. And so in that quiet time of prayer, if we do it here at, my, at Beth Meyer and other shuls, I want you to close your eyes, perhaps put your talit over your head or just cover your hands. Think of them, imagine, specifically the ones who've hurt you. It's gonna be very difficult, very difficult, especially for those who really were deeply pained and aggrieved. And to tell them how hurt you feel in your heart and that you 
if you're ready, you're prepared to forgive them, but only if they come and seek your forgiveness. Now, there could be nothing happen, you know? It's no guarantee. Um, but the prayer alone can rise up the conversation to see what arises within your own heart, your own neshama. I also want to say that over the course of life, while there are some very egregious and serious sins that honestly, there may be no repair ever, no matter how hard you try and many prayers you offer, that's the truth. But for other types of experiences, hurts, legitimate, legitimate hurts, but ones that are not of the most extreme, you know, sometimes time can be helpful over the course of this practice because sometimes through aging, one gets a bit more perspective and even a little of compassion that even though this person hurt me and they were wrong and that's clear as I age I recognize I'm not perfect I make mistakes most people don't intend to do evil acts most not all most and can I find a place of compassion in my heart and that perhaps this is hurting me more than anything else and that sometimes can lift as well. So two practices to consider. One, the Rambam, perhaps go down to the grave for a customary during this period of time called Kevra Avro to visit those who are deceased if you're able to do so. And to bring some friends and to really seek that forgiveness publicly in a very appropriate way. You also could do it quietly in your heart with them present or out loud or during Yisker to seek the opposite. May they, those experiences help you to lift you up and to cleanse your soul, your neshama, from the, the hurt and the pain in both directions so you can enter the new year and the rest of your life ready to be even closer to God and, you know, less burdened on your heart so you can go forward, ready to take on and do better in the world and feel better in the world. In honor of all those who sadly perished, no time like the present. We never know what we have. 9-11 of many things taught us that our days sadly are numbered and no one knows when the end is near. So the time is always right to seek forgiveness from each other and to accept and to forgive others if they ask appropriately. Please God, Shana Tova, a sweet year, a cleansing year, a lifting year, a year where forgiveness reigns. Shabbat Shalom.